Hi everybody, welcome back to Exodus Lab. Um, this is our MP3 modification video and uh, we're going to put that into the uh, Conlon tabletop radio. So, as I mentioned again, <laughs> I'll mention this again, um, there are people there who will just scream murder at what I'm about to do. Um, and that's okay, I don't have any problems with their views and um, I like modifying radios to take an mp3 player as I said it gives the radio a new lease of life you can still listen to AM radio to your heart's content um, and then when you get sick of talkback radio um, you can plug your mp3 player into it or your mobile phone whatever um, listen to whatever you like again listen to old time radio shows on your old time radio so that's my view of it um, and everyone I show this mod too they love it. They go, well, wow, I can do that. I said, yeah. So anyway, let's start. What do we need? First thing, need a little three and a half mil uh, input jack. So these are two output terminals down here. And these are earth lug there. A little micro switch. Single pole, double throw. Which will set, um, switch between... Radio signal and MP3. Two 1 ohm resistors which will connect the output jack, output of the uh, input jack to one of the terminals of the switch and a 10k resistor which will provide the impedance of the load that the uh, MP3 player is looking for in lieu of a uh, headset or head, yeah, earplugs or a headset. And of course, we always need an MP3 player. And this is my <laughs> Mr. Oboe that I got off eBay. I think it was about $25. And of course, to go with it, um, three and a half mil stereo cable, male for male. So we'll just put that away for now. Won't need it. So I will, with, there, there are our parts. And I'm gonna go back to the radio and find a volume pot. So we're going to tap into volume pot and um, use a switch to switch between audio or the radio and the mp3 so volume pots will have three terminals on them always uh, the older older radios you'll notice will have a fourth terminal right at the back um, from what I've read and being told that's a, well, they call it volume contour um, function. Um, another thread I read said that that, that terminal, the back one, uh, provides a, a better bass response at low volume. Um, and we can ignore, if it's got a fourth lug at the back, we just ignore that. So in 99.9% of, .9 of all cases, the middle terminal is the output. Now, I did strike one where the middle terminal was not the output, and this had been done at the factory, um, a set that had been untouched. But I'm always assuming that's the output, the middle terminal. So that leaves our two end terminals. Which one will it be? Well, if we're really, really unsure, I mean, we can, we can always look here and see that, oh, there's a braided cable here. Um, that's shielded, so that's probably going to be our input signal, um, and that's that terminal there is often called the high end. I don't know why, but that's what they call it. Um, so I'm assuming that's Earth. There's a quick way of checking. If that shield, if that cable was not shielded, then we've got two to choose from. So I'll say, is that Earth? So I'll grab my little multimeter probe, put it on a on an earth point on the chassis, switch my multimeter over to diode test with the speaker on, and let's touch that. And I think you can hear it, that's an earth connection there. Well, let's just try it here, nothing. So, top one there, that's earth, and that leaves that little bugger there as um, our input. Now, First thing I do, I want to test as to whether it's actually going to work. 
So, I grab my, I'll pull this out a little bit if I can. Grab my um, MP3 player. I'll just plug it, plug it into my input jack. Then I grab a, a jumper. I think you can see it. There we are. So I grab my jumper cable and attach it to both the um, output terminals. At the other end, I will place on the input terminal for the uh, volume pot. The other thing I must do is earth the plug. So another jumper cable there and um, put it to an earth point and that's that will do with that cap. So turn my MP3 player on. What are we listening to? Oh. Puppet Man by the three by the fifth dimension. Um, we'll turn the radio on. Let it warm up. Again, this is just a, a test that I do to make sure that you know there's something coming through. I'm not wasting my time uh, putting it all together and find out hmm, I've got my volume. The radio working. About six oh yeah, okay, good. So I'm just going to find a quiet spot and reattach my cable there, being careful not to earth it against anything. Let's start the MP3 player. It works. Stop it. Start it. Next song. And we'll stop that. Um, won't run it for long because I don't want to do any damage to the MP3 player by not having the load on it. So that's working. That's going to work fine. It should work even better once the uh, we can eliminate the uh, the radio signal completely through the switch. I'm just going to um, set up so I can drill a couple of holes in the back of the chassis, and then I'll come back. All right, here we go. I've um, marked some, marked where I'm going to put my two holes, put them down there. Um, I've checked, there's certainly, it's empty under there. So I'm not going to hurt anything. And I have my trusty heavy duty drill. And also, a little bit of wood. Rather than drilling straight into the chassis with no support on the back, I always place a bit of wood in there, and that means that I can push into it, and when I drill through, I won't be hitting any components in there. So, not quite right. Up they come. Ah. Right. Right. Pilot holes are drilled. I'll uh, change some drill bits and get back to this. Okay, so I got this tip off um, D-Lab and Terry Dayton, absolute legend, that guy. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do it this way. Wrong way. Go, 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 go. Let's put it in this way. 
and just tighten it up. If <laughs> it'll catch. Nah, it's been difficult. Almost. Okay, I'll cut and get that in. Okay, I got that in. So um, now, put in our input jack. Dropped it, of course. Hopefully I'll get lucky. Now we're in. So, they're on the outside of course, and this is just simply a template to connect our uh, bits and pieces. So, um, we'll make, here's our little one watt resistor. I just put it in there. I'll do it from the top, I think. And I should go on the other way. And if you can see this bit, yeah. So there's our first link. And this is why I use resistors rather than little bits of wires. The second resistor from the um, a stereo jack goes again to the same terminal plug, terminal, on the switch. Just bend that around so we can get it in. Bend it in place. So our stereo signals are coming through a one ohm resistor. It'll provide minimal resistance to the signal. Shouldn't degrade it um, noticeably anyway. Um, so they're in place. And that leaves us with our 10 cut resistor <coughs> for our um, speaker load of the, of the player. And that also goes into that lug there and we terminate that on the earth terminal of the switch and if I can get it to go through there's my pliers hmm. just bend that forward a bit It'll come through eventually. And you know what? That will do. Just try and get it to look neat. That's okay. Right. Just about mm, ready to solder, so I can try and get a crimp on that. That's good. Soldering iron's ready. That's done. That's done. And that's done. And these three mess of wires. Ouch, and that's hot. So, 
snip off the excess. Get in there. that last one there is again I'll make this counts so that's done now we simply undo it ah oh, no before I do that have a smooth surface to work on I like to bend these terminals out just a touch just to give me a little bit of extra room in there. Now I've already cut two wires to length and as I always do, the I cut a black wire where is it in camera? and use that as the, um, the common for the switch and that will go back to the volume pot If you're really into neatness, a little bit of shrink tube over that terminal. And nice little neat job. So, yeah, the, um, the other wire will, which I've had to use blue this time, normally I use yellow for signal wires, pick that up watching um, lots of YouTube videos. Um, that's going to be attached here to the third lug, and that will be connect. the other end will be connected to the um, input. Well, the high end, the high end wire providing signal, radio signal to the volume pot. And so we're able to then switch between MP3, there, radio there, and of course they both come out of the center, center terminal, which is I call the common terminal. And that's pretty much it. So we'll put this wire in. I have another set of wire. I think I've got it right. When I um, first saw Terry Dayton from D-Lab do this, um, it was my, um, yes, I thought that's a great idea. And I was brand new at this. And um, it took me a while to get my head around the whole concept of what this was doing. Of course, now I've done so many, um, it's actually quite easy. Um, I was actually going to say why I brought that up. No idea, no idea. But, oh yes, yes, yes. Um, my first attempt, it worked. Um, and my MP3 player could play, but the volume wasn't very loud. Um, I had the volume up, volume knob up full. And so I uh, actually wrote an email to Terry and asked him, he said, well, it could be the um, volume pot is sucking up the uh, signal. And let's face it, 
these little MP3 players don't put out a lot of signal um, compared to the radio signal they're getting. Um, what I did, I, um, well, I bypassed the volume pot completely. I just um, pulled the uh, output wire from the volume pot and connected my MP3 player directly to that and still crappy volume. It just wasn't loud enough. So then I went to the, uh, I think it was a 6B6 output tube. I went to the control grid and directly input it to the same thing. Um, even changed valves and um, no chance, didn't work. My solution was to put in a, a little preamp circuit powered up, powered by a, uh, a 9 volt DC charger. And when I get a, if I have to do that again, I will put that on up on the site. But for now, we're ready. And we can, sorry for talking so much, but yeah, unscrew, <laughs> unscrew these. If I can. Yes, yeah, gonna take a bit. Give me a second and I will get these off. I finally got them off. The nuts off. So as you can see, we just take it out and reverse the whole thing. And that's a perfect fit. And let's just some washers on them. Oh, before I do that, before I do that. Got to make sure that I'm going to get a, a proper earth for the um, for the input uh, jack. And this thing's painted, so I'm going to have to rough up the surface a bit. Let me just get around to doing that. Right, I'm ready to uh, get rid of that paint. So, dress the little Dremel tool. find it well I couldn't find it but luckily I had a spare nut I'm sure the one I dropped will turn up they always do when you least need them uh, just, okay up and down so that's in and Well, time to look at the volume pot. So that's looking good. So now all we have to do is hold on, phone's ringing. Right, that's phone calls done. So first job, we determine that's the. Signal input, the high end, so we'll just do our best to lift that off. And that was a bit too easy, wasn't it? Makes it even more difficult because it's yeah, the shielding soldered to the pot, but that's okay. And at this point, um, it's the the black common wire from the switch that's which is the output of the switch and it will go to the volume pot and hmm. 
motor should have left a little bit black, greater length than the wire. Not sure if you can see them, just soldering on. Uh, that'll that'll do for now, that'll just hold. Tidy that up later. And is our again our high end. And all we have to do is connect the blue wire. to the radio signal so we're simply just allowing the radio signal to come through the blue wire into the switch and whichever way the switch is designated it will allow either the mp3 signal or the radio signal to come through the black wire into the volume pot so I will uh, join it up but I'm going to uh, need to need a bit more lead on that got it so let me just get some shrink tube yeah got it found a little piece uh, I would normally color code it but I'm limited with the uh, colors of shrink tube that I've got uh, this will be nifty I reckon uh, where's my pliers? I'm so disorganised. Oh, really am. Okay, cut it again. Oh, this is terrible. Right, got them. They were on the floor, of course. Where else would they be? Get that out of the way. How am I going to attach it? Mm. Yep. Let's hook it on. Don't want to, do you? I finally beat it. it up. Hopefully that's going to fit over it. Oh no, it's going to fight me all the way. Hmm. Very carefully. Uh. There we go, got it. Patience. I keep hearing that. Just be patient and take your time. Eventually, you will get it. Or if you're frustrated, just walk away. Have a cigarette, do something. Well, if I've done it correctly, that's it. That should work. And where are we on? Okay, so looking at the switch, we've got radio. I've switched to the radio, so. Pot. And here comes the big test. Oh, one thing I didn't do. I've got to check that the earth on the input jack is actually earth to the chassis. 
So, I will find an earth. There's one. Looking straight at it. And that's the, uh, the actual earth lead itself from the power point. Uh, multimeter set to diode. And I want to hear a beep. I'm thinking, hear it. So that's earth. Good job. Give myself a pat on the back. All right. Let's plug in our MP3 player. Not sure it's on. Is it on? Will be in a sec. Let's get the radio functioning. Plug the radio back in. Again, I still run off the Variac. Okay, that's full power, 240 volts. Wait for it to warm up. Oh yes, of course, I didn't uh, plug the antenna in, did I? Where is it? I'll be the antenna. Ooh, wait a minute. But you know, it connects to that. You know, our people come from a long way back. We understand this land better than most right. people. Mm. But our law is not respected. So we'll now switch to MP3. Let's uh, find a song. Pick. Beach Boys, California Girls. Let's hope. Let's find something more appropriate. Some old time radio. There's a lot of songs on this. Oh, here we go. Adventurers in time and space. Whoa. Told in future tense. Dimension. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. So... That's a complete Can you success. The future? Can you tell what will happen in a hundred years? No, nope. don't know. Okay, that's it. As you see, um, if you've not done it before, um, it's really not complicated. Um, and you do it the first time, take your time um, and go through the video again. I should have actually just drawn a simple little diagram and and I think I will. So give me a second. Well, I hurriedly drew my wiring diagram for this mod. So as you can see, volume pot down there. One's, one of the ends is of ter end terminals is earth, the middle 99.9% is going to be the output, going to the output tube. And the lucky, lucky last it's left, that's our input. So our radio signal wire that was attached to there, you lift that off. First job, attach it and lengthen a wire, attach it to one of the, the poles on the switch. The middle pole on the switch, which I again refer to as common, that's the output from the switch, goes straight to the input on the volume pot. 
and here's our input jack for our MP3 and one side stereo don't forget one side one ohm resistor to the third pole the other side of the stereo input another one ohm resistor same pole and on the earth lug on the um, input jack a 10k resistor again they all terminate together there and check that the resistor is actually earth to the chassis and it doesn't get much simpler than that now if you as I said if you find that it doesn't work and I've had a radio that absolutely nothing came out of no matter what I did um, again volume pot didn't light the signal at all radio worked fine uh, I went to the control grid nothing of the output tube absolutely nothing I ended up putting a uh, Oh, I mentioned it before, a uh, preamp circuit in there, and it worked. Um, so if it's not loud enough, uh, again, just grab your um, MP3 output and go directly to the output and bypass the amp, bypass the pot completely, and just troubleshoot. If it's not that, go to the grid, the, the control grid of the uh, output tube and try that. But before you make sure it's a control grid that you're attaching your MP3 player to, make sure it's not the plate. If it is, you will blow your MP3 player or your phone straight off. There's over 200 volts on the plate. So, look, that's it. That's pretty simple. And if you take your time, if it's your first go at it, just take your time and I'm pretty sure it'll work. Um, but as you saw at the beginning of the video, I just run that little simple test without soldering or anything. Um, as you saw, and that tells me I'm good to go rather than go through this whole process and find out it doesn't work. Hmm, okay. Anyway, if you've got any questions, um, put it down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it and have fun.